Hello, welcome to Analog Arts Pattern Generator Tutorial. Please feel free to download the demo application software from AnalogArts.com to help you follow this tutorial. For this presentation, we use a 16-channel pattern generator, one of the instruments of SL987. In this instrument, the user controls are grouped together based on the function they perform. The display banner contains those controls which configure the screen plot. The data editing panel houses the controls that are used for bit editing. Besides these two panels, there are a channel ID panel, a signal panel, a buffer memory panel, a timing panel, and a utility panel. Each individual button in these panels allows the user to perform a unique task. There are other controls which are displayed only when they are called for. Together, they control the various features of the pattern generator. In order to illustrate these features, we first provide a real-life application by connecting all the channels to the corresponding input of a logic analyzer. The pattern generator originally resets to its default settings. Depending on the application, these settings might not be suitable. The channel ID panel, as its name would suggest, shows how the data bits are arranged. The column next to the channel ID panel is signal name panel. The default name of each signal is data followed by the channel number, as indicated in the signal panel. For example, data 15 is the default name for the signal connected to channel 15. To change the signal name, right-click the mouse on it. This will open the signal menu. Click on the rename option, enter your desired name in the appropriate place, highlighted in white color, and then hit the enter key. Signal menu also allows the user to remove a signal, change its color, and or access the signal group and protocol editing windows. To change the color of a signal, click on the color option and choose the color of your choice by moving the mouse on the color palette. To remove a signal from the display, click on the remove signal option. To remove all of the signals, right click the mouse on the label called signal name and on the options menu, select the remove all option. To add signals to the columns, select the signal option from the menu. This will open the edit signals window. The window lists all of the available channels along with their corresponding signal names. To edit the name of a signal, first select the signal and then enter the desired name in the signal name text box. To add a signal to the list of the display signals, first select the signal from the available signals by the left click of the mouse and then use the button with right pointing arrows to finish the task. The button with left pointing arrows removes a selected signal from the display. The clear button clears the list. Once signal editing is accomplished, the exit button can be used to close the edit signals window. The position of the signal can be changed to the user's liking. To move a signal, first grab it by the left click of the mouse, move it to the desired position, and then release the left button of the mouse. The group editing window can be accessed in a similar manner. A right click on a signal name and then selecting the group option from the menu will open the edit group window. This window enables the user to edit and create groups. To make a group, select each member of the group from the signal list and then use the button mark with the right pointing arrows to add the signal to the group. One thing to note here is that the signals will be put in a group in order, either from the highest to the lowest ID number or vice versa. The reverse order button changes the order. In case a signal needs to be removed from the group, select it from the list of the signal in the group and click on the button with the left pointing arrows. The clear button removes all the signals from the list. When all the members of the group are selected, the create button will finish the action by assigning the name in the group name text box to it. The user can enter the name of the group at any time. If a name is not entered, the default name will be assigned to the created group. The button with the right pointing arrows at the right side of the window can be used to add a group to the display. The button marked with the left pointing arrows removes the group from the list of the displayed groups. If an existing group needs to be modified, the edit button will remove it from the list to be edited. To delete a group, select it and then click on the delete button. Clicking the exit button will close the group editing window. Notice that the members of each group are listed just below it in the signal column. To collapse the group, click on the minus sign adjacent to group's name in the channel ID column. The sign changes to a plus symbol indicating that the group is closed now. Clicking the sign in this condition will open the group. The groups can also be collapsed and expanded by selecting the expand all and collapse all option in the signal menu. The color of a group and its name can be changed by selecting the corresponding options from the menu. 
which is brought up by the right click of the mouse on a group name. When the color of a group is changed, all the signal in the group will be displayed in a new color. The color of an individual signal in the group can be changed in a similar manner. The menu also allows the user to reverse the order of the signals in the group. A group can also be removed by selecting the Remove option from this menu. This pattern generator features two different methods for bit editing. Line editing is activated by clicking on the Line Text Editor button. In the line editing mode, all measurements and labels are based on their respective memory locations. To start the process of editing a data bit, left click on it. Notice that as the bit is being edited, it is in white color. To edit the bit, while holding the left button of the mouse down, drag the mouse. Releasing the left button ends the process. For convenience, the data corresponding to the position of the mouse is also displayed near its position. For precision editing, right click the mouse to open the text editing menu. At the top of the menu, enter the beginning and the end of the memory segment which is being edited. Once the edited segment is defined, the set to zero selection fills the entire segment with zeros, whereas the set to one fills it with ones. The memory segment can be copied and pasted by the copy and the paste options. Notice that the copied section must be pasted into a location of equal memory size, defined by values in the text boxes. Clicking on the math editor opens the pattern generator math window to assist the user to perform logic and math operations. To perform logical editing, the logic operation button located in the logic panel must be on. Then, simply turn on the data bit which is to be edited by clicking on it, and edit the logical operation by choosing the appropriate symbol in the panel. The two provided text boxes define the memory segment of the operation. For example, to make channel 1 equal to channel 2 and channel 3, the memory location between 10,000 and 20,000, enter 10,000 in the initial memory text box, enter 20,000 in the final memory text box, turn on channel 1, select channel 2 from the logic panel, click on the add button, select channel 3. The data bits can also be edited by using various functions. To enable this mode of editing, switch on the Functions button. Select the desired function by clicking on it and enter its parameters in the provided text boxes. This action produces a 16-bit resolution function with B16 as its MSP. To make the channel equal to the bits of a 1 kHz digital sine wave for the entire memory, select the Sign option. Since the clock is set at 100 MHz, each memory location is 10 nanoseconds wide. The period of 1 kHz sine wave is 1 millisecond, equal to 100,000 memory counts. Enter this number in the period text box. The duty cycle parameter does not apply to sine waves. Turn on channel 16 and click on B16. Repeat the process for all the other channels. Now, each channel represents the sine wave. The reset button in the window brings it to its default setting and the exit button closes the window. Although the data has been changed, the hardware is still showing the previous data. To update the hardware, click on the Update Hardware button. Looking at the group digital sign shows the changes we have made. To confirm the addition, we may want to look at the channels in a more meticulous way. The group display format in the signal menu opens the data formatting menu. It offers analog, binary, decimal, ASCII, octal, HTML, and sign formats to display. IDMSP to data MSP and IDLSP to data MSP set the weight of the database as which signal is treated as the MSP. To select the format, simply click on it. We have to expand the group to see the resulting digital codes. To make the viewing easier, particularly when we are using analog formatting, the vertical size of a group and also signals can be changed. This is done by grabbing the group's name in the signal column and expanding it. The zoom in button allows the user to select a segment of the group by the markers and zoom on it. The position of the markers and the distance between them are displayed at the top of the plot. For convenience, the data corresponding to the position of the mouse is also displayed near its position. To scroll the display, left click the mouse on it and while holding the left key down, move it to the region of interest. The display can also be changed by grabbing the memory symbol in the memory panel and moving it. A right click of the mouse on the label signal name at the top of the signal column opens the signal menu, which enables the user to perform a number of tasks. To add column to the generator, click the Add Column section. This opens the column menu with Channel ID, Marker 1, Marker 2, and Reference Options. Choose your desired column by clicking on the option. To remove a column, left click the mouse on its name and choose the Remove Column option. The position of the reference is shown in the memory panel. This special marker is used to set a particular point in the memory as a reference. 
A right click on the plot opens the plotter menu. This menu offers convenient ways to add and remove markers and navigate to the reference location in the memory. It also allows the user to change the display horizontal unit from time to samples and vice versa. The button in the display panel located just above the screen are designed to configure the plot. The home button displays the full content of the memory buffer. The display panel also features the zoom in and zoom out buttons. The zoom in action is undone by clicking the zoom out button. There is also a set of timing markers that are displayed by clicking the markers in the timing panel on. They enable the user to make time and frequency measurements. The corresponding time and frequency data are displayed at the left bottom corner of the screen. Then there are four buttons which have a combination of left, right, up and down arrows. These buttons help the user to locate the previous and the next falling and rising edges of a signal. First, the signal must be selected. To select a signal, left click on its name. Notice that the selected signal has a higher intensity than others. The Show Sample button makes all measurements and labels based on the memory location. Also, the label on the button changes to Show Time. Clicking the button in this mode changes the measurement in time again. Each mode offers its own unique advantages and is suitable for certain applications. One of the important features of the device is its ability to generate popular protocols. To open the protocol editing window, right click on the label marked signal name. When the menu appears, select edit protocols. The protocol editing window features five popular protocols, SPI, Quad SPI, I2C, SIM, and OneWire. For this seminar, we generate an I2C protocol. After connecting the SCL signal to channel one and SDA signal to channel two, we edit the protocol. First, we switch on the I2C button. Then, we select the signal and add them to the protocol. We also select the hex data format and choose the I2C start as the frame synchronization method. We will name the group I2C Group 1 and create it. Notice that the display now shows the protocol. Let's change the data bit back to the digitized sine wave to illustrate the remaining features of the pattern generator. The timing panel enables the user to adjust the timing as he wishes. The clock rate can be changed from 100 kHz to 100 MHz. To change the clock rate, simply enter the desired rate. To use an external clock, click on the external clock option. The utility panel allows the user to perform a number of tasks. Button reset in this panel brings the pattern generator to its default condition. The state list changes the screen to the state list mode. In this mode, the content of each memory location is tabulated for each signal. The list can be scrolled up and down by the scroll bar on the right or by moving the memory symbol in the memory panel. The button with the left pointing arrow brings the list to the beginning of the memory and the button with the right pointing arrow brings the list to the end of the memory. A right click anywhere in the list opens a menu offering useful features. The show sample selection makes all measurements and labels based on their memory location with respect to the reference point. The show time selection changes the measurements in time again. The Go to Reference option centers the list around the location of the reference. To exit the state list, switch on the waveform in the utility panel. The Save Plot and Recall Plot buttons allows the user to save the pattern generator plot and recall it at any time. The pattern generator settings can be saved in a text file. To do this, simply click on the Save Settings button. The settings can be loaded by the Recall Settings button. Clicking the print button sends the pattern generator plot to a printer selected by the user. The help button guides the user to an online analog art information site that hosts a collection of user manuals, a specification, and useful application documentation and videos. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation. For any additional information, please send an email to info at analogarts.com.